you might have heard of the term cloning. And basically, cloning is making an exact match, pixel for pixel, from one area to another. However, when it comes to cloning, it actually requires a bit of skill and practice in order to do it. Primarily because being Primarily because it's a one-to-one -one match, the problem is that the shades or the colors may not actually match, and then you're spending time fixing what you were fixing and probably fixing. But there is an easier way. It's called healing. And what healing is, instead of a one-to-one -one match, which is cloning, healing fixes the damaged pixels in a much more natural-looking way. So, for example, on this image, you could see that there's this uh, speck of something inside of her hair. You can see that she has some blemishes on her face, and we have a bunch of flyaway hair, not only over here, but it's actually hanging in her face as well, as well as the back of her head. So when we get into this image, you'll see that there are a lot of things to fix. And if we went with cloning, we'd be worrying about lining up and making things match, and it's a lot of work. Healing is way more automated. Now, when it comes to cloning or healing, the last thing we want to do is actually work directly on this background layer. And the reason for that is anything that we do is a permanent change. We are literally replacing some pixels with other pixels, and we may not like that. It's much better to work non-destructively. And in order to do that, we're going to create a new blank layer. And we do that from the Layers palette. If you don't happen to have it open right now, you would go Window Layers. If it has a checkbox next to it, then that means that it's open somewhere on your screen. But from within this Layers palette, at the bottom, you'll see an icon that looks like this one, which is a new page. Simply click on it. Now we have the background layer, which has all of our existing image information. When I hide that, we now have this blank layer on top. The checker pattern represents nothingness. What this simply means is if I take my paintbrush and I paint across the top of this image, I can turn off this blank layer and I can turn it on again. And notice that we either have the old pixels or we have the new pixels. This simply gives us the option to use an eraser tool and erase right through it. So the same thing is going to happen when we clone or heal it will simply give us more flexibility in adding and removing pixels, both in the short term as well as the long term if needed. I'm going to get rid of this extra layer by throwing that in the trash and then clicking the New Layer button. Now that we have a new layer, I double click on the layer and I name this Spotting. Spotting is a term used to say that you are removing spots from an image or other minor blemishes. And in this case, we're primarily going to be getting rid of flyaway hairs. So let's begin by zooming in on this image. We'll use the magnifying glass and click a few times. And each time we click, we'll get closer into the image. So now that we're here, I would like for you to click on this icon right here. And if you hover over it, it changes the name to Spot Healing Brush Tool. If you were to click and hold, you will have several other options that are underneath that. But for right now, this is the one that we want right here, the first one, Spot Healing Brush Tool. The reason that we want this one is because it's the quickest, easiest, and simplest for a new person to use in order to clean up your images. Now, up here at the top, which is the Options bar, I want you to notice that I have Sample All Layers checked. By Photoshop's default, it's off. And when that's off, that means that we could do stuff and nothing's going to happen to this image because there's nothing else on this blank layer. And because this is off, it means that nothing is going to happen because the background with all of our existing information is on a separate layer. But by turning it on, the tool is now going to work properly with a new blank layer. Simply, all I want you to do is click, drag, release. That's it. See how easy it was to remove that flyaway hair? Here, I'll do it again. Click, drag, release. See how amazingly easy that was? You don't have to put a lot of thought into this at all. As long as you have that particular tool selected, the Spot Healing Brush, with a new blank layer, sample all layers, and Content Aware selected, you will have an incredibly easy time. I'll talk about these in a second. 
but I just want to do a little bit more where I'm clicking, dragging, and releasing. And notice how it cleaned that up. It's not perfect, so we'll just go over it again, and it will clean up a little bit more. We'll simply click and drag in relatively short strokes. And what it does is it compares the texture and color of the pixels next to it to fill it in. Now, ideally, you want to use a relatively small brush, which is selected up here, where you can make the brush size bigger and smaller. You can also adjust the feathering of it so that it's harder or softer. Now, the benefit of using the separate layer, as I said, when I turn off this background, all of these pixels that we just replaced are on a separate layer. So by clicking on the spotting layer, you can see that all that hair is still there. You see that? It's pretty amazing what can be done. So simply, all you want to do is go along your image and do this. Click, 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 click. Very simple. If you were to use the clone stamp, it's much harder to actually do this. When you come to an area like this that has a very definitive pattern, you want to heal with the pattern. So what that means is I'm not going to go top down because it's going to change the pattern a bit on us. What we want to do is go with the pattern in little streaks. And it will often give you a better looking result. So for example here, I'm going to follow the pattern of the hair as best as I can. And sometimes it isn't as easy as it is to say when you're working with a mouse, but we'll give it a try. Okay, very simple, very easy. I can even come over here to some areas like this that are way more complicated. Now once again, remember, we only want to use a brush size that's just big enough to cover the area that we want to cover. We don't want a really big brush. And I'll actually do that just to show you. If we have a brush that's way too big, strange things begin to happen. It starts pulling in texture and detail and color from all strange areas. And that's definitely not what you want. So, so that's why you use something that's just big enough for you to get away with it. And don't even follow the whole thing. Only do little pieces. It's often easier to do it this way. And if you get a texture that you don't like, go in the opposite direction. And just kind of fill it in as best as you can. Now I'm going to show you one more thing just to be sure that you do have the right thing selected. This tool has three different types. We have proximity match, create texture, and content to wear. If you have the option for content to wear, use that. It's infinitely better. For example, you can see that it starts doing some strange things. And depending on the areas that you're working in, some very strange things can happen. Basically, proximity match is the way that the tool used to work many, many years ago. And quite honestly, this is why this particular tool has had such a bad negative connotation to it. Because people trying to learn, this tool would just do some incredibly strange things that were not very accurate at all. In fact, I'd like to show you this again in a different area. If I hide this background, you can see this particular stroke that we have here. With the content aware, it blends right in. It did a very nice job the first time around. But I'm going to take my eraser tool on this top spotting layer, and I'm simply going to erase and erase the change that I made. Now notice the hair came back. This time, instead of using the content to wear, I'm going to use proximity match and watch what happens. See that? Not at all what we had in mind, was it? So once again, your best bet is to use content to wear and do the exact same thing and you will yield infinitely better results. While this tool is very quick, easy to use, if you work on a very detail-oriented section, what seems to happen is instead of doing a nice seamless blend, 
it kind of smudges the pixels. On this particular image, you didn't notice that as I was working. However, if I have something that's very intricate, instead of picking up the texture and properly placing it, it gets a little confused and starts smudging it. And so your images look a little bit smudgy. As a beginner in quick usage, it's perfectly fine for you to get started with, especially when using a small brush. Now, when you are ready to expand your knowledge base, when you click and hold, there are several other tools that you can use from the healing brush to the patch tool. There's a content to wear, and then there's this oddly placed red eye tool. Now, these are all the healing brushes that we have available to us. There is also the clone stamp as well. And as I mentioned before, the clone stamp gives you a one-to-one -one pixel match, which is really good for replacing pixels. For example, we'll use the healing brush in order to remove some stray hairs from this general area. However, we'll use the clone stamp in order to remove the entire area, just the whole thing gone. And that's what the clone stamp is really used for. Now, all of the healing and cloning tools are covered inside of my Photoshop basic course, where those tools get their very own dedicated class. Once again, designed to make you a better photo retoucher.